All right, everyone. A couple days ago, the chief product officer for YouTube decided to come out and say some some really lame things about content creators, and, and just I, I don't think that the uh, uh, I don't think that the meaning of this that was literally meant was to insult the entire YouTube community. But the way in which it was said, you, you know, when you mean to say something but you accidentally insinuate something else, I think that's a case of what happened here. But he should really be fired for this because this is terrible optics for YouTube, at, a, at the very least, he should be forced to apologize for this. Uh, and that's the, the chief product officer, I'm not going to use his name, but you look up the story if you want to, link in the description, of course, uh, because you know, YouTube has a problem with that these days for no apparent reason, uh, was insinuating that, uh, that authoritative voices should be boosted in, you know, RE coronavirus. And YouTube has done this anyway, like, like the priority system initially was just to shield like large corporations and celebrities from false flagging. That was years ago. That's why the priority system began to exist. They said, well, these accounts are from trusted individuals and groups that we know aren't going to fuck with the site. So we can just, we can just give them a green card, so to speak, and they can, you know, do their thing. We're not going to query them on copyright. We're not going to, you know, the, the automated system will skip them over in checking. So if some, a bunch of people flag one of their videos, it doesn't clog up the system because it'd be a malicious attack. Because, you know, you know, Jimmy Kimmel's not actually going to be make, taking dick pics and putting them on YouTube, so it's not a problem. That was okay. Unfortunately, what they've done is they've taken the same priority system and they added another layer to it. And what happens is, like, if you look up news items, this is especially for current events. This affects people like me disproportionately on YouTube, if you look it up. The algorithm will automatically suggest, the front page will be nothing but priority creators if it's a recent story. Like if, if let's say that there's an update on uh, the US dollar, the US dollar begins to crash or something, and I make a video about it. In the old days, the fact that I had high engagement and a large audience meant that because my video was considered relevant by the system, it would usually be on page one. There were times when I was ahead of Fox and CNN in current events. That's why my channel was growing so quickly. Now what happens is that if any video has been made by one of these priority creators, the algorithm will automatically boost it to the top, and then it just sort of, I guess, randomizes which priority creators uh, are, are, are first, second, third, and so forth. And people like me with larger presences, we do get treated more favorably than people with smaller channels, sometimes, uh, but we're below all of the priority creators, so it's an automatic demotion of our content. Now, this has been the case for some time, but YouTube is now declaring that it's inserting an, uh, even more uh, algorithmic manipulation, at least insofar as coronavirus goes. The idea is, well, if you want people to be uh, aware of what's going on with this disease, then we have to boost the more authoritative voices. The thing is, and then he insults people because he said, well, yeah, I think that legitimate sources, and what did he say, should be favored over some person in the basement with a webcam or something to that effect. That's 99.9% .9 of the entire YouTube community. That's most of the content creation that happens. This is, by the way, the kind of content creation that literally built YouTube. YouTube was not built by CNN or Jimmy Kimmel. It was not built by Ellen DeGeneres. It was built by people like me. You've just insulted and you've insinuated that we're not capable of providing context. You said, well, in the rapidly shifting uh, uh, stories that you get with something like a pandemic, I mean, you need to be adequate information, and these people sometimes they can't provide proper analysis and context. I provide just as much accuracy in my reporting because guess what? If it's my job and I'm making money off of it, I have a vested interest in being as accurate as possible. I fact check, and therefore my content is authoritative. I do fact check. <laughs> I have to because if I don't, if I go, if I produce things that are bullshit, I'm going to get called out on it and lose subscribers. That's what. That's what being authoritative actually means insofar as the platform. But CNN can put out lies and they're not going to lose subscribers because they're still going to have their story bu bumped to the top by YouTube. You've actually disincentivized, by the way, fact-checking among independent creators some because most independent creators that do like current event stuff, they're not going to bother. They're just going to be sensationalistic because it's the only way they're going to get noticed at this point because they're buried behind all of the CNNs and MSNBCs. So I think that this individual should really apologize to the uh, independent community there. By the way, couldn't there be a little bit of mission creep with this? Why stop at coronavirus because of a pandemic? What about coverage of any news topic of any particular note? Oh, well, we got to boost authoritative voices. YouTube implemented that two years ago. But what it really is doing is it's not boosting them, it's demoting people like me. 
makes me feel rather sad. You know, you're on a platform for a decade, you know, building your brand. You are attempting to be as accurate as possible because it's your job. And then YouTube and then YouTube's uh, chief product officer comes along and basically says you're a piece of shit. <laughs> That's basically what it boils down to. And I bet that a lot of larger creators won't even talk about this story because they're afraid of losing their channels. They're afraid of like getting censored, getting banned or something because they're pointing out that this individual working at YouTube is insulting people like me. Hey, link, read the uh, thing for yourself. You can read the story. Link in the description, archived, of course. You can go and, uh, ahead and read it for yourself. Determine for yourself whether that qualifies, it's about halfway down, I believe, the page, uh, qualifies as basically insulting most YouTubers. And the insinuation of basement dwelling, by the way, isn't that kind of a loaded term at this point anyway? Oh, some dude in his basement. Well, the, the insinuation there is that the person is a loser and doesn't know what they're talking about. That, that, that they're, you know, beyond just low budget. Like, my setup is technically kind of low budget. I uh, wish I had a better microphone at the moment, but nothing ships to the Netherlands these days. But, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't make me non-authoritative. The fact that I don't have a studio and, and, you know, soundproofing and studio lights and a staff and an accountant and stuff does not mean that what I'm saying is less accurate. If anything, the WHO updates throughout time have been inaccurate. They've been wrong on, on numerous occasions. We've, we've seen politicians give people wrong advice. Pelosi uh, saying, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, of the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, back in February telling people, oh, don't worry about it. It's just the seasonal flu. You should go out and go to this parade. You should go out and mix it up and have a good time. She's not saying that now, is she? Now, should she be demoted by YouTube? I guess that's not authoritative. Now she's probably got a YouTube channel. It'd be funny. Her YouTube channel would be like AOC. She'd be sitting there mixing cocktails one after the other. So she can't even fucking stand <laughs> on a good day. She's probably problems with that anyway. Cause she's pushing 80. Uh, no, YouTube uh, should address the situation. You've steadily alienated independent users in favor of corporate talking heads and people under contract. It's like, you know, some regular YouTuber can't even get ad revenue. YouTube's got a big problem with that. And yet they're giving people six figure contracts just to make videos. Like they pay Will Smith to make YouTube videos or Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. That's not really why people use YouTube, though. If they want Arnold Schwarzenegger and Will Smith, they can go, go see Netflix or whatever. These people where, you know, YouTube is paying people that were well-known 30, 40 years ago to come to the platform that they were using anyway. They already were using it. They also already were making money. They're already making it. Don't you think that it's kind of difficult to really have a, a true brand at this point without a YouTube channel? Just sort of the way that it is. It's become, you know, the juggernaut of video. Now, of course, there are sites that are trying to change that. And YouTube doesn't do itself any fucking favors in the commercial sense when you have people working at YouTube, higher-ups, saying things like this to the community. So, yeah, link in the description and check it out. That's about all. Peace out.